they don't call it Saturday Night Live for nothing. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 celebs who've accidentally dropped the F-bomb on SNL. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're ranking the most impactful instances of celebrities dropping that infamous curse word during the live comedy broadcast. We're including cast members, hosts, and musical guests for this list. And sure, maybe not all of these verbal gaffes were perfectly accidental, but they certainly made for some memorable television. Number 10. Samuel L. Jackson I want to thank my guest, the incredible Samuel L. Jackson. Man, hey! <laughs> The first F-bomb on our list has a little bit of controversy. You see, many in the audience at home and in the SNL studio swore they heard Samuel L. Jackson blurt out his cuss word during Kenan Thompson's hilarious What Up With That sketch, but there's no definitive proof. Thompson even rolled with the apparent mistake, laughing that those kind of words cost money. Come on now. That cost money. Jackson claimed after the show that he stopped short of dropping the full F-bomb and that Keenan was supposed to interrupt him before the final K. We'll let you judge for yourself who's right. Did you say that? Yes, I did. Number 9. Steven Tyler Once again, Aerosmith. Aerosmith was on SNL back in 1990 and made it a memorable episode by dropping in on Mike Myers and Dana Carvey in a Wayne's World sketch for a bit of fun. Welcome to Wayne's World, almighty oh ones. Not everyone was laughing later on when the band took to the stage as the episode's musical guest, however, as they performed Monkey On My Back from the album Pump. Frontman Steven Tyler couldn't be bothered to censor himself on this night and chose to blurt out one of the song's lines, quote, feeding that f***ing monkey off my back without restraint. Number 8. Morris Day Waiter, I think I have the hot turkey down. What comes with that? Steven Tyler and Aerosmith may be the first musical culprits on our list to drop an F-bomb, but they will not be the last. Morris Day and the Time were a funky R&B group, best known for their appearance in Princess film Purple Rain. The band's biggest hit was Jungle Love, but the Time also played the song Chocolate on SNL, and it was during this second performance when they got into a bit of trouble. Every time I'm on the day, I want to love you to make me wait. Morris Day & Co. started out the song just fine, but the singer dropped his F-bomb when the song was almost finished, saying, quote, Where the f*** this chicken come from? I thought I ordered ribs. Where the f*** this chicken come from? I thought I ordered ribs. Uh. Number 7. Prince Party up! One, two, three! Speaking of Prince, the Purple One himself dropped an F-bomb of his own nearly 10 years before Morris Day & The Time, during a performance of his song, Party Up. Prince, never one to censor himself, sang the uncut line, quote, Fightin' more is such a f***ing bore. While it also sounds like he might have said freakin' instead, we unfortunately will never know for sure. Now, it makes sense that casual swearing probably didn't go over that well with TV audiences back in 1981. But incredibly enough, Prince's performance wasn't even the last time an F-bomb would be dropped on that episode. Never mind the series run. We don't wanna fight no more. Number 6. Charles Rocket Hi, Charles Rocket in New York City. Case in point, Charles Rocket. Rocket was a member of the SNL cast during the series' disastrous 1980-1981 season, primarily as host for the Weekend Update segment. Rocket was in the middle of a Who Shot JR parody of Dallas during that season and was in character during this episode's closing moments. It was here where he remarked, If I'd like to know who now, we're not sure what possessed Rocket to drop such a casual F-bomb right before the closing credits, but we do know that his stay at the show did not last much longer, as he was fired midway through the season. <laughs> Number 5. Sam Rockwell Thank you! Oh my goodness! Thank you very much! Okay, we're not sure if we can blame Sam Rockwell for this 2018 F-bomb, as his character on this parody of 90s science programs was supposed to be frustrated. Rockwell's Mr. Science was gradually losing his patience with a pair of useless junior scientists who just don't seem to have a clue. The sketch appeared to be going smoothly, until Rockwell slipped up with an F-bomb. You can't be this stupid. 
To their credit, both Sam and SNL players Mikey Day and Cecily Strong kept their faces straight and carried on, which just goes to show how professional all three were during what could have been a live disaster. Kids aren't stupid. I, just say what you see, okay? Say what you see. What you see? Come on, are you kidding me? Number four, Norm MacDonald. Last weekend in Washington, a new museum dedicated to broadcast jerk. Bah! <laughs> SNL cast member Norm MacDonald got into the F-word business in 1997 when he misread his lines from a teleprompter while hosting Weekend Update. MacDonald muttered, quote, what the f*** was that after the flub, which caused the audience to roar with laughter. <laughs> My farewell performance. The comedian took the gaffe in stride, however, remarking that the segment was his, quote, farewell performance, before telling the SNL crowd that maybe he'd see them next week. Thankfully, the slip-up didn't cost Norm his job, and he went on to continue killing it on SNL. Burt Reynolds. What is Popeye? <laughs> no. Number three, Jenny Slate. This is my show. Either love it or change the frickin' channel. This entry might win the Best Reaction Award for comedian Jenny Slate whose unintentional F-bomb was probably the most memorable aspect of her SNL tenure during the 2009-2010 season. Slate was taking part in a sketch alongside Kristen Wiig when, out of nowhere, a line that should have read, quote, and I love you for that, was delivered as, quote, and I fucking love you for that. You freaking just threw an ashtray full of butts at my head? You know what? You stood up for yourself, and I fucking love you for that. Slate immediately realized her error, and her mortified reaction is just priceless. What's worse, this was on Slate's very first episode as a featured player. Whoopsie. As much as it was important for me to be like, well, you know, get your ass back up, you know, don't, don't stop, I never would have. Number two, Paul Schaefer. You can't flog and play on flogging me all the time. We go all the way back to 1980 for our penultimate pick and a person who you might not expect to accidentally drop an F-bomb on live TV. Please welcome back to this theater, the great Paul Schaefer. Yep, it was musical legend and future David Letterman band leader Paul Schaefer, starring in a sketch about medieval torture. So far, so good, right? Well, that was until Schaefer mistakenly said, quote, instead of flogging, surprising everyone on stage and in the audience. But it didn't hurt Schaefer that much in the long run, so no harm, no foul. Just think you fly better, but you don't fly better. It throws the whole f***ing timing off. <laughs> Number one, Kristen Stewart. Ladies and gentlemen, Kristen Stewart. We can't blame Kristen Stewart for being just a little bit excited at the prospect of hosting SNL. After all, it's an honor few dream will ever come their way. Maybe that explains why Stewart, in her excitement, proclaimed the hosting gig to be, quote, the coolest f***ing thing ever during her opening monologue. We've got a great show and I totally care that I'm here because it's the coolest f***ing thing ever. Oh. <laughs> Honestly though, Stewart, A.D. Bryant and Kate McKinnon laughed it off like pros. So this one rises to the top as our favorite F-bomb snafu. Just because of the aw shucks, good-natured feeling of it all. Bless you, Cara's also here.